What's going on guys? This video is going to be a follow up to the tire swap I did on the B1. That video not too long ago with the 100 wide in the rear. Um, so what I wanted to show you guys is unfortunately with these hubs being so skinny, the 100 wide doesn't exactly fit. Now you could probably run it like this, but as you can see, we are actually bending around the tire and we are rubbing really bad. So in all honesty, stock as is, you could probably only fit like a 90 wide on it. Um, now if I don't, if you guys remember, I was saying we might be able to get rid of this spacer right here. Um, I think, yeah, I said that in my uh, review, my unboxing and review video, that we might be able to get rid of this spacer right here and shift the tire over. Um, but that brings up the sprocket. If we shifted the whole tire over, that would just bring the sprocket over as well. So what I went ahead and did is I designed these hub spacers. Uh, so I'll go ahead and pull the tire off and I'll show you how this is going to work. Now this is uh, made out of PETG, which is stronger than PLA. This one that I printed, um, this was like my final model with PLA plus. Actually, this is just regular PLA. And um, I've been running this for about a week. And so far, no deformities, it's not crushing. Um, and you know, I only did this one. I did three wall thick at like 15% infill with gyroid, which isn't exactly the, uh, the thickest infill that you can do. It's actually like a quick infill. But uh, it seems to be holding up great. I mean, you're not getting any heat on this side. Um, I would be worried about, you know, this side with the rotor getting super hot. If we put a spacer in that, it would probably melt this stuff. But over here, I'm not seeing any issues so far. But I'm going to continue to test this. Um, I'm actually going to throw on the new Pet G1. And uh, possibly think about making some money off of them and selling them if you guys want to run street tires on yours as well. So go ahead. So you can kind of see that little bend right there. I'm going to go ahead and pull this tire off. I'll show you the spacer, how it sits on there. Then we'll throw the tire back on and I'll show you the gap that it'll leave you. All right guys, so we got the tire off. As you can see, we got the sprocket off as well. And I will go ahead and show you the design. So as you can see, we got the insert right here. Um, I got to mess with my PETG to get it more dialed. But uh, as you can see, it'll sit on this inner, this ring right here, just like so. And it's kind of a press fit. And then we will line up our holes. So as you can see, all of our holes line up beautifully. And now that's gonna give you a six and a half millimeter um, extension. So we're getting rid of this spacer that was in between this brake bracket and the swing arm. So getting rid of this width, we need to add that width on the opposite side where the sprocket sits. So as you can see, we got that perfect. And we also rose it up and gave ourselves another lip for the sprocket to sit on. That way it sits hub centric. Go ahead and put that on just like so. As you can see, no wobbles, it's nice and tight. All right, grab our bolts here. Go ahead and spin that in. See, no resistance. Oop. Just like so. And then I'll go ahead and pop on the other ones and tighten them real quick, and I will be right back. All right, now you can see that everything is nice and centered. Everything's nice and tight. Um, it crushes down just fine. I'm not losing any thickness. Of course, the final product will probably do like a 80% infill with four walls. That way, it's just we know it's nice and strong. Um, but uh, basically, the, the way this thing works is the spacer is really not going to see that much. Um, it's basically just holding it center, and the bolts are going to keep it from moving around if that ever does happen but as you can see this thing is super strong and of course uh, I will be testing it and letting you guys know in the future cool so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back onto the swing arm again getting rid of that little spacer and I will show you the space that we now have in between the tire and the chain all set up 
ready to go. As you can see, we got ourselves a little gap in between the tire here. Um, spacer is gone. Now there is a little nub back there. I did have to grind it a little bit right, right where it's welded just to get this to sit nice and flat. That way your brake isn't cockeyed like that or something. As you can see, we got our spacer in. Yeah, guys. So I figure uh, as long as this holds up, maybe I can get a few out to you guys and make a little bit of money for the channel. Of course, everything earned here is going to be put back into the channel one way or another. As you can see, we are good to go. I am also thinking if you look down in here, we do have a little bit more room side to side here. So I'm thinking maybe I will buy another 12 mil spacer and I will shave it down like maybe another five mil and add five mil of thickness to the hub spacer that I made. That way we can bring the tire over five mil more and then bring the sprocket over another five mil and then possibly, fingers crossed, throw a 110 wide back here. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to show you how I got my 110 wide or my 190 12 on the back of my B1 here. Um, if you guys are curious how the hub is doing, the hub spacer is doing, go ahead and leave me a comment. Of course, I will let you guys know. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. Later guys.